Bismillah. Inna alhamdulillah. Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Man yahdihi allahu fala mudhilla lah. Wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلق من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam uh, before I begin today, I stumbled across a story that I want to share with you this morning uh, related to our topic. And the story is about a young man and a beautiful young lady. So uh, either you're living in that situation right now or you once were living in that situation. And you may or may not be able to identify with this story. So the young man, he sees this most attractive young lady, and he goes to his father, the halal way, and he says, I want you to marry me to her. Go to her parents and ask for her hand in marriage for me. So the father, he's okay with that, and he goes to this young lady's house. But the only thing is that when he sees the lady, the young girl, he asks for her hand in marriage for himself. He was so attracted to her and her beauty that instead of going on behalf of his son, immediately his intention changed and he asked the father to marry the girl himself. And so he goes home to his son and he says, listen, son, um, you're not on the level of this girl. She needs someone that's a little more mature and accomplished so, it's better that I marry her. You can wait for someone else. So the boy, of course, he's, say the young man, he's extremely upset with his father and disappointed with this, and so he goes directly to the police station. <laughs> Straight to the chief of police to tell him what had happened between him and his father and that this man has now taken away the love of his life, or what would be possibly. So he goes to the chief of police and he tells him the story. So the chief says, listen, bring your father and bring the girl here, and I'll handle it for you. So the father comes and the girl's there, and when the chief of police sees the girl, he says, guys, neither one of you are on the level of this girl. You don't deserve her. But me, the chief of police, however, I'll marry her instead. Solve the problem right away. So now the son and his father are in the same situation that the most beautiful girl that they were after has been stolen away from them. What are they going to do except that they go to the local judge who's going to hopefully settle the dispute? So they go to the judge, both of them father and son, who were once at war with each other. Now they're teamed up together to go after the police chief. And they tell him the story of what happened. And so the judge says, well, obviously, you're going to have to bring them both here to court so that I can settle the affair. And the same thing happens to the judge when he sees this girl so beautiful, so delightful. He says to all three of them, the young man, the father, and the chief of police, none of you are on the level of this girl. So 
I'll marry her and settle the dispute. So now the three, the father, the son, and the chief of police are all together teaming up. After this girl, they were just robbed by the local judge. So the next step is that they go to the Supreme Court to complain about the local judge. And there the Supreme Judge, you may call him, the same thing happens to him. He says, bring them here. And when he sees this beautiful, delightful, wonderful woman, he tells them, it's settled. I will marry her while you are not on her level. You do not deserve her. I am the supreme judge. Therefore, I can provide her what she needs. So now, you have the four, the young man, the father, the police chief, and the local judge, all of them after the Supreme Court judge. So where could they go after that? Except for the leader of their country. So they go to the leader with this issue, and they complain about what has happened, hoping that they will find justice finally. And so the leader, he says, bring the Supreme Court judge here and the girl. And when he sees the beautiful girl, he's overwhelmed with her beauty. And he says the same thing. None of you here are rightfully deserving of this woman. But the only fair thing to do is let her decide who she wants. After all, you can't force anyone to marry someone that they don't want to marry. Even in Islam, we can't do that. As Muslims, we can't force someone's hand into marriage, which all of these men were trying to do, trying to force this beautiful girl to marry them, to stay with them and to be with them, to comfort them and to shower them with her delights of beauty and love. And so the girl, she speaks up and she says, that's fine. But I have one condition. And that whoever meets my condition, one condition, then that will be the one that I'll marry and I'll stay with forever. And so all of them, they say, great. <laughs> Only one thing. Normally, when you're looking for a woman to marry, there's more than one thing. There's a long list of things, depending on who it is you're marrying and where they come from. So here you just have one thing, and she says, you have to chase after me. You have to run after me, and whoever catches me first, then that'll be the winner, and I'll marry them. Easy enough. Just run after her. She's going to run, and she takes off. She's running, and they're running after her, and she's fast. You would never imagine that a young lady like this would be running at such a fast pace. They can't seem to catch up with her. The young man in all of his strength and his energy. The father with his experience. The chief of police with his might and his strength. The judges with their authority and control. And of course the leader with his great position of power. None of them could catch up with her. So they stop. Exhausted. Spent. And they find themselves dug into a hole spinning their wheels like you do when you're stuck in the mud. When you spin those wheels enough, you dig the car deeper and deeper. And so the girl at the top of that hole where they are down into, she turns and she looks into the hole and she says, don't you know who I am? In the most beautiful voice, with that radiant beauty, and they look up at her, and they say, who are you? And she says, I'm the dunya. And this hole is your grave. Don't you know that it doesn't matter how long you chase me? You will never grab me. You will never have me. You will never own me. And you will dig yourselves your own graves chasing after me. The delights of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, 
قل إن كان آباؤكم وأبناؤكم وإخوانكم وأزواجكم وعشيرتكم وأموال وأموال اقترفتموها وتجارة تخشون كسادها ومساكن ترضونها أحب إليكم أحب إليكم من الله ورسوله وجهاد في سبيله فتربسوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين in this verse, in Surah At-Tawbah, ayah number 24, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, Say, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your kindred, that wealth that you have gained, the commerce and the business that you fear will decline, and the dwellings which you live in, which you are pleased with, are dearer to you than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, and striving hard in his cause, then wait until Allah brings his decision, a painful torment. And Allah guides not those who are al-fasiqun, those who are disobedient to Allah So as a continuation from last week, looking at the object of our desire, one of the diseases of the heart, it is passionate love for this world. Just like the passionate love found between a man and a woman. To love this world and all that it contains. Where the object of your desire and obsession. It is feeding your worldly lusts. And selling your hereafter for it. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he says that this type of love. In the, word, in the Arabic language, they call al-ishq. It is a severe type of love that the soul loves what harms it and hates what benefits it. The heart has become so diseased and corrupt with this type of love, this passionate love for the dunya, that it can no longer recognize what is actually beneficial for the soul. But the opposite happens. That it begins to love the harmful things. And it begins to despise and hate the beneficial things. So when you look at this story, you can see just that. The behavior of these men. Falling in love based upon a worldly trait, beauty. Something which, of course, as we know, is fleeting. It doesn't last forever. Both for men and women. When you're young, attractive, eventually that, it goes away over time. They desired that beauty so much that it didn't matter who they hurt, who they stepped on, who they wronged, who they lied to, as long as they could obtain that woman's hand in marriage. Until the father began to steal from his own flesh and blood. The father began to betray his own son. And what more beautiful and loving relationship can you find than between a father and his son? This love story, when we think about it, many of us, we are in our own love stories right now. Perhaps it's not with a woman or with a man, but we all are dealing with a little love story with the dunya. We've all fallen for something. You have to ask yourself, what is it that is making you sell yourself short, your akhirah? What part of this world has captured your eye that you are running after it, chasing after it, regardless of the consequences, regardless of how much you harm yourself and your family? Regardless of how much harm comes to your own soul, there is something there. Think about it. How many times have you compromised yourself for worldly gain? How many prayers have you missed for your job? How many prayers have you delayed because of your work that you're embarrassed or scared or lazy? How many times have you lied to get what it is that you want? Whether you're lying to your family, whether you're lying to your friends, whether you're lying to your boss, 
or whether you're lying to yourself so that you can gain something in this world. How much of your bank account is padded with money that you earned from haram? Consequences that you did not think about, you did not care about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you were not worried about, but you were worried about that love of the dunya. How many times have you turned your back on Allah azza for the sake of this lovely, delightful, beautiful world that you are living in? All for what? It's a mirage. This dunya is a mirage, just like the one who is thirsty in the middle of the desert. They're almost dying of thirst, and they begin to imagine off in the distance a beautiful oasis. And they begin to run. They get the strength left in their body, and when they arrive to the end where they think that they're going to find sustenance, there is nothing. Just like that woman standing at the top of the grave looking down at you, mocking you, saying, don't you know who I am? I am the dunya. And this hole is your grave. Don't you know that you will never stop chasing after me until you find yourselves dug into your own grave? أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضاه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد الله سبحانه وتعالى يسأل عن سورة الحديد اعلموا أنما الحياة الدنيا لعب ولهو وزينة وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الأموال والأولاد كمثل غيث أعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور. الله عز وجل in سورة الحديد verse number twenty he says know that the life of this world it is only play and amusement it is nothing but a game it is pomp and mutual boasting amongst yourselves and rivalry in respect of wealth and children. As the likeness of vegetation after the rain. Thereof the growth is pleasing to the tiller. Afterwards it dries. And you see it turning yellow. And then it becomes straw. But in the hereafter. There is a severe torment. For the evildoers. For the deniers of faith. For those who put their desires. Above the desires and wishes of Allah. And there is also good pleasure. The reward for the righteous and the good doers, whereas the life of this world, it is only a deceiving enjoyment. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is degrading this world. According to Imam ibn Kathir, rahimahullah, the words in this verse, extremely powerful, are belittling this life. They are belittling the pleasures found in this world and exalting the hereafter, both the hellfire and the paradise. In their severity, in the serious nature of both of these destinations, that this life, regardless of what it is, good or bad, bitter or sweet, it does not compare to the next. There is nothing that you can achieve Nothing that you can have that will give you ultimate satisfaction. Look at the parable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses in these verses. When he says that this dunya, it is like a flower. That you are pleased with after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends rain. A blessing that you find in this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with many things. He gives us family and home and security and serenity. He gives us wealth. 
He gives us food and clothing and shelter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us our functions, our eyesight, our hearing. Blessings from Allah All of them which will end. Just like that flower that came from the rain, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a beautiful flower, a beautiful harvest. The tiller, the farmer is pleased with what they have been able to grow. But its shelf life is short-lived. When they see it turn green and blossom and the fruits and the flowers and the vegetation, eventually they begin to see it dry and wilt and turn brown to die out till it becomes nothing but straw, nothing but hard paper-like sustenance or substance that floats away in the wind and it's gone and never to be seen again, never to be enjoyed again after that moment. But what is in the hereafter? It is everlasting. It is forever. Can you really imagine that? Can you think about that for one moment? That the akhirah, it is everlasting, eternal. And all that you do in this life will determine how you will spend eternity. So this will begin, inshallah, a series on how we should look at this world. What is the real value of this dunya? And how we can begin to cure our hearts of this disease, passionate love for worldly things, sacrificing our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah to bless each and every one of us and to protect us from evil and from falling into the traps of the shaitan and to cure our hearts from these diseases. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa akhiru da'wana. Nalhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa aqmi salah.